How you doing, YouTube? Matt Massive Beer Reviews, back with yet another review. A little bit of Illinois-based, hopeful, hazy goodness in the form of Noon Whistle Brewing. It's their Gummy Acalypse Northeast India Pale Ale. Yeah, never heard of these guys before. Uh, actually, that's not true. I've kind of heard of them, but I don't remember what I heard of them about, but I was lucky enough to get a beer meal. Hey, beer meals. Um, from Chicagoland-ish area from Chuck, and he sent me off a bunch of beers. And this is one of them. And I'm kind of intrigued because gummy acalypse. I assume you're just going to get a big, huge amount of like gummy bear type flavors in it. But we'll see what's what about this can. A couple things. Noon Muscle, name of the brewery. Gummy acalypse. Northeast India Palo. That's another one. Um, let's see. 8.2% alcohol by Vorium. North uh, Noon Muscle Brewing Company. Uh, that'd be that. Yeah. She be. Some kind of day old. I can't read that. And the only other thing I'd like to label. It's okay. You know, big kind of mustardy band with a bunch of like zombie, gummy zombies that I guess you would say down there going on. It has one of those tops on them. You don't see that. I never see these, what these are. And I'll pull it off right now before I even pour the beer. Is, oh, God damn. Is one of those kind of full on caps. Actually, I need to pour the beer to show you. You can see how big the cap is. I've never seen anybody anybody use these outside of uh, Pennsylvania brewery by the name of Sly Fox. Um, they kind of have the uh, kind of the uh, whatever you want to call it there. You can see how it opens up. Basically, it's like if you want to drink beer and you're tailgating and all that kind of stuff, you don't have to worry about a glass because you know, it's going to drink more like, you know, an actual glass as supposed to drink it out. Just a little lid cap thingy. Anyway, Sly Fox at a PA. That's pretty much what they're known for. And I well, my understanding is these caps don't really fall into line with some legalities in some states. Like New Jersey can't have them. Other states can't have them for some weird reason because it's a freaking cap. Who knows? But, yeah, weird to see another brewery use them. Anyway, what do we have here? Uh, lighter than your typical hazy. Um, you know, it's got a bright, rich yellow-orange color to it. A little bit of soft head on it. Nothing too crazy, even from the beginning when I poured it. Um, and, yeah, I mean, she looks the part. Be it a little bit lighter. A little bit. Just a scoosh lighter. Ooh, give her a twirl. See what the nose has. Okay. I'm getting... Maybe it's the color kind of lending itself to what I think about the beer, but I'm getting these soft kind of lemon square pastry kind of vibes. I'm not that there's lactose in it, but I'm, I'm thinking lemon bars. Lemon squares. Yeah, but it's nothing too crazy. The nose isn't out of this world. Soft citrus vibes, leaning a little bit of grapefruit, a little bit of lemon, maybe a little bit of soft, like, um, star fruit, tropical fruit, like a kiwi thing. Add a little bit of sweetness to it. And there's a soft bittering, a little bit of soft green bittering around it. Done and done. You know, nose is nice. Nothing otherworldly. Let's dive in and see what she's got. Cheers. Yeah, it kind of follows the taste, to be perfectly honest with you. Probably a little bit more of that bittering, staying in that kind of generic, kind of hot pellet green realm. Again, on the other end of things, I'm getting a little bit of that citrus, leaning a little bit grapefruit, a little bit lemon, tropical fruit, star fruit, a little bit elevated. Everything is the same on the nose that it is in the taste, except everything's just a little bit elevated. I appreciate that. You know, noses are fine, noses are dandy, um, but when you smell something and it smells epic when you taste it, it's kind of a letdown. Super bummer. You're not getting that here. You're getting the opposite. But all in all, it's a pretty um, relatively reserved beer, especially for 8.2% alcohol by volume. Smells and drinks more like a 6% beer. Now, for some people, you're going to be like, wow, that's a good thing. They're hiding the alcohol well. They are. But I live on the other end of the spectrum. If I'm going to drink something that's high in ABV, and for high for ABV for me, in the hop world... Not in the dark world, but in the hop world, is anything above 7%, I wanted to drink, like, not necessarily alcohol-wise, but I wanted to drink impact-wise for the ABV that it's delivering. Hops, the presence, the mouthfeel, I really want anything bigger and bolder, because if I'm going to pay for those ABVs, I kind of want them bigger. And this is quite tasty, but I really wish this beer was more like 6%. That's just me, though. Mm. Yeah, nice mouthfeel. Like I said, grapefruit, starfruit, on the other end of things, with that soft lemon vibe, which I really kind of dig. Nice mouthfeel. 
green hop pellet just airing almost slightly to the um, weed smoking variety of green done and done i like it i think it's fun it's tasty let's talk about it is it one of the better double ipas that i've had as late <sighs> not in not out it's on the edge um, i've had some really amazing double ipas that have been like okay I don't like drinking a eight and a half percent beer, but this beer is too good. I'm cool with that. This is, like I said, kind of in the other realm where it's like, it's not giving me the impact that I want out of those higher ABV beers. So, you know, if you told me this was five, five and a half, I'd be like, oh man, this is a killer five and a half percent beer. And I've had ones like this at that ABV. So I'm not asking for something outside the realm of possibility. It's just, it's quite tasty, quite nice. If I can get this off the shelf, I'd be quite excited, but other than that, not really blowing me away. Uh, value and availability, no idea. Maybe uh, Chuck or somebody out there can chime in. Let me know what's what. And leave you with, if you like what, will you like this beer? <sighs> if you like those, you know, you don't get a lot of that lemon-lime thing. That lemon-citrus, that lemon-grapefruit uh, thing. Especially how much is it delivered. It's not pledge, mind you. But it's definitely in there. Especially in nose and the taste. And that kiwi thing is very distinct for me. So, if those are two flavors that you dig and you live in in that world where you want the l l higher ABV beers to come off smaller, this is going to be awesome for you. Not really getting a ton of gummy, beer, gummy bears, I guess, but I guess I get to see that. A little bit of sweetness, a little bit of uh, stickiness. I mean, we can, we'll, we'll allow it. So there you go, another review in the books. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Down there if you want to talk about it. Massive beers if you want to check me out doing the social media stuff. Beer massive if you want to check me out doing the whole podcasting thing. And hopefully you guys enjoyed the review. Hopefully you're enjoying a nice little gum apocalypse. Gummy apocalypse. I'll butcher everything. And hopefully see you next time. Cheers.